Hello everyone and welcome to part 34 of basic training. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Excite Bike Arena on 150cc. Now before we can talk about strategies, we have to talk about how the track is actually constructed. The track is laid out as a long oval with five obstacles that you're going to encounter. Two small hills followed by three big ones, a series of right left right ramps with a long one at the end, a mud patch followed by an orange boost ramp, a big hill followed by an orange boost ramp, and an overhang trick ramp. These five pieces will all show up on every run of the track, and when racing online, they can appear in any order, with two of them showing up on the first straightaway of the lap, and three of them showing up on the second straightaway, giving 120 total variations on the track layout. The time trial pattern is the same every time, which on the one hand is nice for consistency, but the issue is that the strategies that are possible in the time trial pattern are not always going to be possible in other patterns depending on how the pieces are put together. So I'm going to teach you how to deal with all the obstacles using the time trial pattern, but I'm going to do so in such a way that they should pretty much be reproducible online, regardless of what layout you get. With all that out of the way, we can finally get onto the guide. We're going to be using our tried and true try-hard build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider for this course. You'll notice that there are four lanes on the track. I'm going to number them from left to right like so. If you're just trying to beat the Staff Ghost, you can make things pretty easy on yourself by pretty much just tricking off every trickable surface on the track. The one exception is the right-left-right right ramps, where you're going to want to trick off the first ramp on the right, drive straight, and then do a wide left drift off the second ramp on the right. You then want to tighten up your drift angle just before getting to the final ramp and then do a mini turbo trick off of it. This will help you minimize airtime, which is faster, and it should also put you in a pretty good angle to take the shortcut with a mushroom. After that, like I said, the rest of the track is pretty straightforward for the most part. On the final turn of the lap, make sure to keep a tight enough angle that your back tires are in between the grass and the mud, otherwise you'll get a ton of slowdown. For the coin lines in this version of the run, I suggest hanging out in lane 4 for the first straightaway to grab 4 coins, and then move to lane 2 for the second straightaway to grab 3 more. Then on lap 2, you can stay in lane 3 to get your last 3 coins. Other than that though, we're done with the easier version of the run, and you should hopefully be able to get a sub 150 without too much hassle here. So how can we push these strategies further? For that, let's check out what I do in my current personal best. One bit of terminology we're going to need for this is the slide, which is basically just a drift without building up a mini turbo. Slides in this game have a ton of uses, from more precise control over how your cart is aligned, to helping get lower tricks, which is good for maximizing your forward momentum when going off ramps. Now when the run begins, the first obstacle that we're going to encounter is a series of hills, two small followed by three big. What I do is I hold right at the start so that I can immediately move to lane four. Then before you get to the first ramp, do a left hop into a wide right drift. For that right drift, you want to try and time it so that you land on the ramp, otherwise you'll get flung too far to the left. If you did it right, you'll be able to grab the coin in lane 3, and then mini turbo trick off the second small ramp. Stay in lane 3 and grab coin number 3, and then trick off that ramp, moving to the left hand side of the track to prepare for the second obstacle, which is a series of hills alternating from right to left to right, and then ending with a hill that takes up all four lanes. Like I said before, the goal here is to minimize our airtime on that last hill, so what we're going to do is avoid the first hill altogether, and instead do something similar to what we did with the first obstacle, with a right hop into a wide left drift off of the lane 2 edge of the second hill. While in midair, hold down a hard left and then as soon as you build up the mini turbo, release it and start holding down the drift button again so that you can land in a wide right drift off of the lane 3 edge of the third hill. When you're in midair again, start holding down a hard right to charge another mini turbo, and then mini turbo trick off of the final hill. Now here's how the first two obstacles look in slow motion with an input display. I know it seems complicated, but the basic idea is that we want to minimize our airtime as much as possible, which is why we don't trick off of that first hill in the first obstacle. It's also the case that mini turbo tricks are just more powerful than regular tricks anyways, which is another reason why we want to do that setup. The second obstacle is definitely going to give you problems when you're first learning it, but after you get a feel for it, it's not that bad. And in either case, if you thought that was annoying, that's not even the fastest way to take the second obstacle. What you actually want to do is kind of a mirror image of what we just did, but on the first ramp. This time though, we want a mini turbo trick off the second ramp, and then trick off the third ramp. Ideally, your momentum will take you all the way to the top of the last hill, at which point you can trick and mushroom through the cut just like before. This is actually faster than the strategy I use in my PB, but there are two issues. One is that it's much more difficult to pull off at all without just running into the grass or messing up your alignment, and two is that even if you manage to get decent alignment, the strat itself needs to be executed in a really precise way, 
Otherwise, you'll get a bunch of airtime on the last hill, which costs enough time that it makes the strat just not worth it in the first place. So yeah, my strategy is not optimal by any means, but it's the fastest strategy that I could find that could be executed with at least some consistency. Now these first two obstacles are easily the most difficult part of the whole run, but they are also the most useful to learn for online play, so I definitely recommend trying to master them as much as you can. Thankfully, almost everything from here on out is pretty straightforward. After coming out of the mushroom cut, trick off of this hill on the right, which is going to be here no matter what pattern you get. Then we'll come up on the third component of the time trial layout, which is a mud patch followed by an orange boost ramp. Pretty simple, angle yourself slightly left and then do a right slide into a left trick off of the very bottom of the ramp. The fourth component of the time trial layout is a gigantic hill followed by an orange boost ramp. The strats here are pretty similar to what we've already seen in other obstacles so far. We're going to do a neutral hop and then land in a right slide just before getting to lane 2 of the small portion of the hill. We're then going to do a trick while holding left on the joystick. You'll land just around the apex of the big hill, so make sure and land in a wide left drift. You'll fly off the top of the hill and move towards the orange boost ramp, which should give you more than enough time to build up a mini turbo. When you get it, immediately release and then land in a wide right drift off the orange boost ramp. Here's how this strategy looks with an input display. It's really important to make sure that when you do the hop that your joystick is in a neutral position before you actually start that right drift, because otherwise you'll be angled too far to the right and you'll go past the orange boost ramp. If your soft drifting's on point, you'll be able to build up a super mini turbo, but at the very least you should be able to get a mini turbo before approaching the final obstacle, which is simply a big hill followed by a trick ramp on the left. Not much to talk about with that one, just a mini turbo trick off the hill and then a trick off the ramp. Do one final drift around the last hairpin turn, and you have learned how to successfully navigate all five blocks in Excitebike Arena on 150cc. You may have noticed that we only have eight coins at the end of lap one, so we're going to do a mirror image of what we did at the very start of the run and move to the left hand side of the track, doing a right hop into a left drift off the first hill, followed by tricks off the next two hills. Other than that, laps two and three are exactly the same as lap one. Now that's it for my strats, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the world record, because if you thought my strats were difficult, well, just watch what's happening on screen. It's another baby world record, so, you know, more mini turbos and higher levels of mini turbo, but that also allows for a ton of extra mini turbo tricks and a lot more complicated drift setups than are possible with the Waluigi build. This run defines precision, and this is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful looking records in the entire game right now, so it's definitely worth it to check out in full after you're done with this video. Now let's talk a bit more about the track while checking out my current personal best. By the way, if you found the video helpful so far, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button down below and leave a comment, as engaging with the video is the best way to help it get spread to more people. Thank you very much, I really appreciate that. So, Excite Bike Arena. I don't know if I'd say that it's the most difficult track in the game, although it probably is, but it's certainly the most technical and the most complicated to truly master, if for no other reason than doing so basically requires learning 120 different tracks. 240 if you count the fact that there are actually two different patterns that the coins and the mud patches can appear in, which is something I neglected to mention in the main video. Obviously it's not that bad since most of the patterns can be dealt with effectively if you just learn how to deal with the individual component pieces like we already went over in the time trial pattern. However, like we already talked about, the strategies for a lot of the individual blocks, and especially components 2 and 4, are really specific, and therefore really easy to screw up. And if that weren't bad enough, Certain configurations of blocks make it literally impossible to put into practice the strats that we covered in this video. As an example of what I'm talking about, for the first series of two small ramps into three big ramps, we went over about how you want to drift off the first ramp and then mini turbo trick off the second ramp. But if you have a pattern where the overhang trick ramp, which was component five, is in front of those little big hills, then you won't be able to drift off that first ramp cleanly and you'll have to improvise. Now, there are some examples of optimal strats for different combinations of blocks that you can find in Toshio's guide, but Naomi was kind enough to point me to a playlist that has 65 different videos about strategies you can use for different variations of the patterns that you can find online. I've got a link to that playlist in the description, so definitely check it out once you've gotten the time trial pattern down as good as you can get it. And that's everything you need to know to play Excite Bike Arena on 150cc. One of my longer videos in the series, and that's even after trying to keep things as concise as possible. So that should tell you just how hard this track can be to learn. 
I got a ton of help from Naomi and from a guide written by Toshio. I've linked to the guide and to Naomi's social media in the description. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.